I always see you guys doing stuff. So I hate, I hate to start. Okay, just starting off, uh, you know, looking forward to the pit game. You know, I think it's back 1955 uh, since we've been playing them. You know, it's always been a Northeast uh, rivalry game. Um, I'm extremely humbled to be a part of it as a head coach now. Because um, growing up as a kid, I watched those games, you know, my whole life. And uh, now to be part of this game is great. Um, you know, now we're in the ACC. That's the only change. That's the only change, agent. So we're excited to be back home in the Dome. Um, we're excited to, uh, you know, fight the good fight to bounce back against a good uh, pit football team. So with that being said, any questions? Could you talk about how your team has uh, been so resilient after, you know, some of the blowout losses this year, some of that to win the next game? I think that we have a, um, I think we have a very strong uh, football team of, of high character. I really do, especially our senior class. Kids are going to be kids, you know, they're going to make, they're going to make mistakes along the way in their, in their young lives, just as I did when I was a kid. Um, but for the, for the majority of this senior class, these are kids uh, that are, very sturdy. They're, they're strong individuals, and um, you know they, they, they fight for the next day and the next opportunity. And we talk a lot about appreciating the game that we play and, and treating it with great respect. Respect the game, and to that respect, you have to be a strong person to, you know, get your butt knocked down and get back up and fight. And that's what it's all about. It's as simple as that. So we have another great challenge, you know, coming up here on Saturday. See if we can bounce back and fight the way we need to, and improve upon the things that weren't good enough in the last game, and not make excuses. You know, uh, a lot of people asking about injuries. It's that time of year. Unless you haven't played the game, if you never played the game, never had your ass kicked, you don't get it, and you don't respect it. And that's the part that our kids do respect. So they're going to be banged up. We're going to be banged up, and we're going to have to play our butt off to find a way to get that victory. And it's a great challenge for a young man. Yeah. Scott, that resiliency that the team's had through injuries, just talk about some of that leadership that's really come from every different place on the field when it comes to those injuries. Yeah, well, the next man up is always the key when you have injuries. And when um, your position isn't hit with the injury bug uh, and another position is, that's when, as a coach, you have to say this is a learning opportunity. So if the next guy in the room gets hurt, you know, the next guy on the other side of the room is ready to go in for the team because the cause is far greater than the individual. That mindset of what do I need to do for the team? Do I need to move positions? Do I need to uh, change the game plan as a coach? Do I need to say, man, I'd love to do this, but I can't do it because these two guys, you know, it doesn't fit into their skill sets. And I think that mindset of adjusting to the elements is something we talk about a lot. And you can use that phrase in so many instances. And this would be one, you know, uh, for any team across the nation. This time of year, this is what it is. This is this is what it is. So we look forward to it. We look forward to you know going out there and, and playing uh, playing with that mindset of controlling the controllable, adjust to the elements, fight the good fight for one another, for a greater cause than self, and enjoy the experience doing it. Julian being down and everything, Joey's going to be ready to, you know, be a, a backup. Uh, we can move people around and be creative uh, with what we're doing. Uh, but uh, they just don't get any better than Joey Nassar. He, he's, once again, he's of high character. He's been here for four seasons. We put him on scholarship this year um, because he earned it. And, um, you know, he's played in the kicking game some. And, uh, you know, whether or not he plays much on Saturday, uh, Saturday is neither here nor there. The thing I love about him is... Uh, uh, he has great respect for the game, and uh, you know, it's that appreciation that comes when you see a young man come in. And you know, he's got he's, he's got his cousin Ryan, who was you know a superstar here. Um, and Joe, you know, he's a little bit smaller. He's this. He's not that. Uh, but Joe's gonna go out there and make a ton of money someday because he's just he's bright. He's sharp, and he's what Syracuse is all about. He's the epitome of a student athlete. He's the epitome of a young man that came into a program as a walk on and earn a scholarship towards the end of his uh, career because uh, of his work ethic and his character. There's been a couple games this year where you, you know, use external circumstances to kind of motivate your guys uh, before a game. 
His Jordan was on. Uh, no, so I've never, I've never take advantage of an injury. I never take advantage of an injury and, and try to put it out there and say, go win one for Julian. You know what I mean? That would be so immature as a coach, in my opinion. You know, taking advantage of uh, a situation or a young athlete is one of the most despicable things you could do. And I would never use that as a motivation. You know, I think that's for the movies. And movies are fake. You know, uh, you know people pretending to be other people. That's, you know, that's, that's what the movies uh, are about. <coughs> We're going to come in this room and say, it's too bad that one of our guys is down. Who's the next guy up? And, and what a great opportunity for the next guy. And Julian's of such high character. That's why I love him so much that all he does is support the next guy in. You know, he, he's, uh, he's, he's doing well. He's uh, back. You know, got back Tuesday. Saw the whites of his eyes every day this week. Feeling good. And he's excited for the next guys who are going to rotate in and get a few more reps. Just like when he was hoping to get more reps, you know, when the opportunity came, whether you earn it through playing time or it happens because there's natural injuries that happen, you know, in this, in this crazy game we coach and play, um, you know, to me, it's, it's, uh, it's that approach. And I would never want to take advantage of, you know, like the external things, like I'm not sure what examples you're thinking of, but those Maryland, are, for one. Uh, say it again. Maryland, Tulane. What, what specific external uh, motivations? Well, people don't Oh yeah, well, I think that's far different right there. That, that's respecting, you know, that's respecting our university. That's far different. I'm talking about race relations in, in, in a time where our country was uh, really ugly, and uh, I think that's totally different. A young man. Will uh, Will Julian be able to be at the game in, in some capacity? Yeah. Anyone else got a question? Coach. Yeah, coach. Just just looking at Pitt for a second. It seems over the last few games it nearly abandoned their run game. Just as just besides the fact that it's been a little inefficient, just from what you've seen on tape, what tendencies have led to that the last handful of games? I think a lot of things, you know, you have to look at where the game is, you know, where they're in the game, how many points they're behind, what's going on there, that's one thing. Um, they do have this this quarterback uh, Savage is a talented young man. He's got a he's got a big arm, they have two really good wide receivers. You know, you guys know and familiar with Street, he's had a good you know, a, a real good run at Pitt. Uh, but Tyler, you know, Tyler Boyd, you know, I think he's only a handful of catches or maybe maybe a dozen or so catches uh, under what uh, Larry Fitzgerald was in his freshman year. Larry Fitzgerald, come on. You know what I mean? Uh, so this kid's really good. So I think they're trying to take advantage of the talent that they have and adjust to the situations to try to give themselves a chance to win. And, you know, Paul Chris is a very good football coach, known him for years, and um, I think they're trying to uh, play to their, their strengths. I was just wondering uh, how much you think both programs have kind of adjusted to the ACC. Will this look more like an ACC game or an old Big East game? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We're part of the ACC, so it's going to look like an ACC game. <laughs> I think it's going to look more like an old Northeast rivalry, you know, and uh, that's what it's all about. Chris? Um, so we, we constantly do a lot about um, penalties this year. Um, you're on exactly the same pace, actually, as, as you guys were last year. Um, I guess, is that surprising? Is that an overblown stack? It's, no. over, it's overblown. It's about wins and losses. Yeah. Scott, Terrell Hunt's resolve through some struggles in the ACC. Can you just say what you know, you've know you seen from him as a leader and, and what we don't get to see on the field? Uh, you know, I think he, he works hard to try to, to be the quarterback position leader type uh, on the field. Um, but, you know, really he's, he's trying to just fight to get better every week at all the things that uh, we're asking him to do, and he does that. He's a hard-working kid, spends a lot of time up here in the, in the video, uh, you know, in the video room watching, watching you know, himself, watching the, the next game, the tenants he's trying to prepare. So he prepares well, he's working hard, and uh, we just tell him try not to get outside of yourself. Just, just try to do what Coach, you know, Lester's teaching you to do. He's learning from a guy that plays a position and went through the same – Struggles with developing as a uh, quarterback. So, your last question from Nico. Uh, you know, you kind of touched on it in your opening statement. You know, the history of Pitt and Syracuse. You know, after a season of playing all these teams in the ACC, yeah. is it kind of nice to play this, you know, old rival in a 68th time you land this weekend? It is. I think every every game is an opportunity uh, and, and presents itself with, you know, this is neat to go play here, a new team. You know. Uh, this is neat to come back and play somebody that we've played a lot. And uh, I think the part that, that's neat about it is, you know, our alumni, their alumni, uh, the recruiters.
recruiting the recruiting part of you know the region, um, the old fan base on both sides. You know, uh, to see that game and be familiar with you know with the advent of all the super conferences in the country and, and the college football you know change uh, agents that, that are happening. I think there's something kind of cool about you know watching a Syracuse pick game, Michigan Ohio State game, you know USC UCLA. You know, all the ones that we grew up watching, or at least I'm a little older than a lot of you guys in the room, but, you know, the, you know flipping on the TV and, and, and being familiar, hey, there they go again. Remember remember three years ago when this happened? Remember that one game? What year was that? You know, to me, that's what that's what the old-time rivalry is. 1955, that's a lot of years. You know, and a lot of people will sit and, and turn that TV on and say, hey, another Pitt-Syracuse game. I think that's really cool. Uh, you know, I'm a traditionalist.